Hi, my name is Daudi Mugabe and this is Business Mike episode 27. My guest today is Nasa Katramo. He's the country director for Wild International in Uganda. In this episode, Nasa shares some of the benefits that entrepreneurs can gain by joining Wild's Great Business Club. All this and more next on Business Mike. Thank you so much for joining us today on Business Night, Nasser. Could you briefly tell us who you are and what you do? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be on your show. Um, my name is Nasser Katuramu. I'm the country director for Wild International here in Uganda. Well, prior to this interview, I happened to attend a business breakfast that you hosted, and I could tell that you're passionate about entrepreneurship and helping business people achieve their potential. What is it about business in general that gets you excited? Um, that's a good question, Daudi. Um, maybe, maybe just to answer that question, I'll just give you a, a quick brief about Wild International as well as I answer that. Um, so Wild is a professional services firm that was started by somebody who believes in the potential of businesses to be great. And that pretty much forms the fabric of Wild International. And everybody that works at Wild shares in that belief, and that includes me. And so what excites us all really about business, and the reason why we do what we are doing at Wild, is that we believe that a business like the heart is to the body. Um, a business is the heart of society. And, and what that means is just the same way that you know, the circulation of blood starts from your heart and it nourishes the rest of your body. We believe that business in any society really is what nourishes that society. I mean, it's a source of jobs and income, and it's, uh, you know, as a result, it's, it's a result as to why you know, a society will have access to social services like healthcare and education and, and good roads and X, Y, Z. And so in the end, the health of a society really comes down to the health of business in that society, and that's the reason why we're really excited about business. Um, are there any businesses you've started on your own? Yeah, yeah, I'm a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I've had good and bad experiences in business. Um, uh, so I've had experience starting businesses in the technology sector. Mm-hmm. I've also started business in the commodity trading sector. I've started businesses in the development sector, so what you'd call social enterprises. Um, I have been involved in quite a number of business ventures in my time. And I think that is also one of the things that I bring to the table um, as a partner at Wild. And the same applies to the other partners. Um, Every one of them really does what they do out of personal experience. What they do is informed by personal experience. And so for sure, I have been at it many times. Yeah. I listened to your speech at the expert talks and the speech you gave was about fixing something that isn't broken. Absolutely. And uh, during that speech, you gave a personal experience about some of the businesses you started and ideally the motive you had at the beginning, which was to basically, can I say, copy and paste a working model. And uh, during that speech, you basically highlighted the fact that people who have great businesses did not necessarily copy someone. Their vision and their goal was ridiculous. It wasn't in the norm, it wasn't in society. They were trying to fix something that, in essence, wasn't broken. So from your experience, both in terms of, you know, starting your own business and also the experience you've had with the various entrepreneurs you've helped along their journey, what can you draw from this mistake or what is it about people in general that makes us want to copy a functioning model? How can we trick our minds to so to speak, think out of the box. Um, that's a good question, Daudi. Um, we are human beings. And for human beings, I think it's natural for us to always try and seek the easy way out. We're always trying to find the, 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 the path of least resistance, mm-hmm. so to speak. And, you know, we always try to avoid pain, really, in life, generally speaking. As a child, I'm sure if you are told by the doctor to choose between an injection and swallowing tablets, you'd always take the tablets or whatever, a syrup. And so that's who we are. That's in our DNA. And so you find that because 
a lot of entrepreneurs get into businesses for the wrong reasons. And let me just expound on that quickly. There is a type of entrepreneur that gets into business because they are driven by passion. There's something they love and they are driven by an obsession for that thing to do something about it. There is a problem they see around them. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired of that problem. And so they start a business to solve it. Such a business comes from a very deep place. Mm. And those entrepreneurs, when they start such businesses, are not motivated by, by, by the reward of money. They are motivated by seeing their creation come to be. So that's one category of entrepreneurs. They're really driven by passion and they end up being a lot more creative. They have a lot more stamina, so to speak, to withstand the challenges that are inevitable in business. Then you've got a second type of entrepreneur who gets into business as a means of survival. And so that kind of entrepreneur is not driven by passion. What they're looking for is a quick buck. They have been fired from their job. They have, they have failed to find another job, and so their only option is to start a business. They have been prematurely retired from their job. Nobody else will hire them because they are too old. They end up going out to start a business, um, and so on and so forth. And so for that type of entrepreneur, the reason they try to start business is not because they are driven by a passion for whatever the business is designed to do. What they are looking for is a mechanism to make money. Mm -hmm. And as such, the moment a challenge is thrown at them with that mindset, they will give up. And the level of innovation or the creativity, the emotional energy that goes into building that business is far less than the first type of entrepreneur that we discussed. And so that is fundamentally what makes a difference between those two types of entrepreneurs. So I think really to answer your question, Uganda is faced by a problem that is lack of employment. Uganda is faced by a problem that is poverty. And so because a lot of people don't have options in terms of how they earn their living, a lot of people then end up in the, in the world of entrepreneurship for the wrong reason, which is to survive. And as such, right from the word go, they are cut out not to build the great businesses that the passion-driven entrepreneur is likely to build. And I believe this is where Wild comes in or the Greatness Business Club in helping entrepreneurs basically focus on the right, um, can I say, on the right path. Absolutely. So what is this Greatness Business Club and uh, who is it for? What's it all about? The Greatness Business Club, as the, as the name might suggest, is an entrepreneurship development program um, that is targeted at SMEs. And the point of that program is really to create a space for entrepreneurs that are looking to get into business or that are early in their business or that have been in business for a while but are challenged in such a way, as, in such a way that they are unable to grow their businesses to the next level. And so it provides a space for such an entrepreneur to be able to learn what they need to learn in order to grow a business, um, it, to be able to network with other entrepreneurs, um, to be able to collaborate with other entrepreneurs, and in doing so find accountability structures that can allow them to really um, you know, reach their growth targets a lot faster. And so that's the kind of platform it is. So it combines education, around important fundamental um, components that any business must be any business must be on top of um, so everything from how to be on top of your finances to how to have the right people how to manage performance how to have proper governance structures name it but not only do we look at the systemic issues of a business we also look at the entrepreneur as an individual so everything from your your mindset to your philosophies your beliefs um, the things that make you who you are, your character, and how that reflects on your business. So we try to, we have created a program that essentially is aimed at helping the entrepreneur as an individual reach their greatest potential as business leaders, but also one that helps the business 
as an entity reach its greatest potential for productivity and profitability. And that program is administered over a period of 12 months. So it involves a one-day workshop once a month for 12 months. In between the workshops is an executive coaching program um, in which we work with the entrepreneur to ensure that what has been learned during the workshop is implemented and done so successfully. And, and that is done for a period of one year. So yeah, so that's what the GBC is. And we're really excited to actually have it here in Uganda. It's been operational in Kenya for, for, for over six years and it's been very successful. We've had hundreds of entrepreneurs go th through this program and many have reported, you know, quite impressive um, results, so to speak. Um, you know, we have stories of businesses that have actually doubled in their revenues as a result of implementing what was learned during the program. We have stories of uh, businesses that have expanded their reach beyond one country to several countries across the continent. We have stories of businesses that have, in, in, you know, that have expanded their employee base from a couple of employees to tens of employees. And so we have seen some pretty amazing stories. And so we believe that that is actually a program that every entrepreneur needs. Right. And your program is basically built around four pillars of organizational leadership. Correct. The first one is um, culture. Now, this is a word which I keep hearing over and over again, organizational culture, best fit you know, for the culture. What is culture and, and why is it important for business? Actually, that's a good question because it's, it's, it's something that we have found a lot of businesses are completely out of touch with. A lot of entrepreneurs don't really understand it. But the best way for you to understand this and for the listeners to understand is to think of it as the character of a business. So the same way that as an individual, there's a character, there's something that defines who you are, your likes, your dislikes, the things that uh, your principles, your values as a, as a person, the compass that allows you to be able to say yes and no to things as you walk the journey of life. Um, okay, I have a question. Sorry to cut you short. Yeah, sure. When you say character or personality, I could argue that there are two sides. Right. For instance, there are certain companies which have extremely good customer care, right. but the employees on the inside are not um, having the best time of their lives. Maybe the conditions aren't the best. Right. So there's an internal character, meaning how do we treat each other inside or how do we work with each other, or how are our systems built, right. and there's an external character of how are we perceived right. by our customers. So which one of these two is it addressing? Is it both or one of them? Well, what I can tell you is that as you are inside, so are you outside. Mm -hmm. I think what's important if you have, what's important is what's happening on the inside. So for example, a company that treats its employees well and that values the welfare of its employees, by default, that's going to spill over to the customers because you'll have happy employees that will be happy to, the, to do their job and they'll go over and above to ensure that the customers are happy. If however you have a company that does not value its employees, values its customers, but does not value its employees, then the chances that execution at the customer care level is going to break down is very high because you do not have motivated employees. You don't have employees who um, um, find uh, fulfillment in the work that they're doing. And as such, what you have is policies, procedures, that you're struggling to have your employees implement simply because it's not part of the DNA internally. And so when we talk about culture, at, at Wild, we refer to that as the core of a business. And I think that suggests where that can be placed. It's really on the inside as opposed to the outside. And so our focus there is really on figuring out what that fabric is that ties everything together from the inside. What are the things that are important to the business? What are the things that define what that business is. Uh, I like to say who because that sort of captures the, the sense that a business in itself is like an organism. It's like a living organism. And so you, you need to sort of think of it as a person. So there are companies that have values like, say, leadership, um, innovation, um, customer care, um, employee welfare. When you look at those values, that shows you what it is that the company holds close to its heart. And what that means is for any company, whatever you have listed on your values, uh, on your list of values, on your value statement, 
the company in order to actually see the full potential of that value statement, to see that translate into behavior within the company, to see that translate into performance within the company, then investment must be put in ensuring that those things happen. So what do you mean when you say innovation is a value of the organization? As an organization, and this is where WILD comes in, to ensure that there is alignment, you're what you say you are. So if you say innovation is a value of the company, that means that that should be part of the culture of the company, which means you should encourage people to take risk. You should encourage people to make mistakes. You will not penalize people when they fail on a project that they're innovating around. If you say innovation is part of your culture and yet you're going to penalize someone for going out making a mistake and losing money for the company, there is misalignment. And therefore that culture is not, the company is not really living true to what it says its culture is. And so that is what WILD does. We really ask the tough questions. Who is it that this company is? What are the things that are important for this company in terms of values? And how then are these values being integrated into how the entire institution functions? Um, so that's what we mean when you're talking about culture. And you'll find that if, there's, if a good job is done in ensuring that that culture permeates through all the systems and processes, then it reflects positively on the outside and you don't have to worry about the kind of results that you get because they'll be good. Your second um, pillar is strategy, planning and execution. Um, th that sounds a bit straightforward, but unless there's something more to it, what, what, what can you tell us about strategy, planning and execution? Well, the way I like, the, the best way to think about it is to, is to think of it through this analogy. Um, the core or the... The, the culture of an institution captures the identity of the, of the company as well. But in there, you also have the vision of the company. Who are we and where do we want to go? All right. So all that is captured in the identity. The identity is where do we want to go? Who are we there? Now, if you know where you want to go, okay, the strategy and planning process is the way. You want to go to the U.S., you're in Uganda, what way are you going to follow to get to the U.S.? You've got several options. You could decide that you're going to um, that you're gonna drive across Africa to the other side of the continent, take a cruise ship, and find your way to the coast of, of the U.S. You could decide you're going to fly. You could decide you're going to run there as an athlete and take the rest of your life trying to get there. <laughs> um, so figuring out which way you're going to take that's going to get you to your destination, which is your vision, most efficiently. So speaking in business terms, which way is going to get you to your destination while making you the most money and while saving you the most money at the same time? That's your strategy. And so it's so important that every business has a strategy because without a strategy, then you have a destination, you have a vision, if you do, but you really don't know how you want to get there. You're simply just shooting in the dark. And so the strategy is what makes sense of everything else that you have in the organization once you've figured out where you want to go. Structural and operational alignment, that's the third one. What, what's that all about? Um, so once you have your way, all right, you've figured out that I'm going to fly to the U.S., you need a vehicle. You need a means by which you're going to fly. Those are your systems and processes. That car, the vehicle, the mechanism by which you're going to get to your destination, you've figured out your way. So, for example, you want to get to the U.S., you've chosen you want to fly. If you want to fly, then your chosen vehicle, quote-unquote, cannot be an automobile. It cannot be a border border. It has to be a plane. You see? You have to align the vehicle that you're choosing with the way that you've chosen. And so depending on what strategy you've chosen, the systems and processes you have in place must be aligned to the strategy that you've chosen. And so that's the way to think about it. If you have the wrong vehicle, if you have the wrong systems or the wrong processes, you won't be able to execute on your strategy. And therefore, you will not be able to get to your final destination. Right. And the final one, number four, is people alignment. Absolutely. So when you have your, if you have your destination, you've figured out which way you're going to get, you're going to take to get your destination. You've figured out which vehicle you're going to use 
to take you on along that way to your destination. You then must find the right driver for your vehicle. All right. So if you've chosen that you're going to fly to the U.S., then you will not get a taxi driver to fly the Boeing 747 that will get you to the U.S. You must find a pilot, someone with the right skills, with the right mindset, someone who knows how to fly planes. And so in terms of a company, once you have the systems and processes that are aligned to your strategy, then you must find the right people to operate those systems and processes. So alignment in terms of people simply means that you're getting the right people for the job. But what job? The job is to get you to that destination and you have a clear way of getting there and you have clear and set processes and systems that will allow you to execute on that strategy and so then you get the right people to actually operate those systems and processes. I agree with you 100% because sometimes when people think about starting a business, and the easiest that comes to mind for me is um, a business where you, the person starting it, have the technical ability. Right. Maybe you're good at computers or graphic design or fashion design, whatever it is. You kind of, according to the order you've described to me, you know, the company culture, the strategy, the structure alignment, and then the people alignment. Right. Most people, I would argue, maybe start with, with the last one. They start with the skills, but they don't know why they're designing. Well, they just know they, they're going to give a service. Maybe they can do it better than some of the people they've seen out there. But there's no clear vision on how to get there. You know, there's nothing like, in order to be the best, I need to maybe put my shop here or partner with this person, or I need to learn this extra skill in order to make the business run efficiently. I need to have these systems in place in case I fall sick, will the business survive? Questions like that. So I think this is a very, very good approach to building and managing a business to be successful even in your absence, I believe. That's very true. And indeed, through our GBC program, these four pillars, so to speak, are the ones that we systematically go over. And we help a business to be able to build its capabilities around, um, around uh, its identity and culture. Um, we help businesses to build their capabilities around strategy, around systems and processes, and around people. Every great business around the world, name it, has excelled at those four components. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter which country or continent they're on, it doesn't matter how old, how successful they are, in order to be successful, those four components must be gotten right. And so that is what we try to do with the small businesses, really. We are introducing them to a game of play that um, uh, you know, only the big companies invest in and we are trying to get that down to smaller businesses so they know what's important and they know how to best invest in those things. Wild has just opened up in Uganda. Your first class is coming up in September. This recording is coming out after that. So the classes are re have already um, started. But from your experience in Kenya, can you give us some of the businesses that have gone through this program and, and how they've managed to transform themselves. Give us a, a story of someone who came to you and benefited greatly from this. Right. So um, there is a business. Um, it's a business that was in the field of photography. And so a gentleman who had a couple of employees joined the program and they had maybe two employees at the time. And what they basically did is they did photography and they did production. And so their product was essentially things like TV ads, things like um, skits for, adver for advertisements and things like that. Um, you know, people in the media industry would know what this is. And so he started this program and when he started it, he showed all the typical symptoms of a one-man show. So he was the guy who took the photos, he's the same guy who went and set up the lights, he's the same guy who put makeup on the on the you know on the actors and actresses he's the same guy who did the editing he's the same guy who went and closed deals with the clients he's the same guy who had to do his own accounting and that is typical of any startup business or any small business in africa so this guy went through a program and he was burning out when he started our program 10 months down the road after going through all the different modules for 10 months he expanded his employee um, his employee base from just two employees to about 12 employees. And his revenue grew by 200% during the same period of time. 
because now he was able to take on so much more business because now he had a much bigger team to work with. The reason he was able to get a much bigger team is because he learned about that thing called a system and a process. And he basically implemented what he was taught to the letter. And so he set up systems that then allowed him to absorb people and manage people and control performance to the extent that he was able to take on so much more business. And so he, lo- he was seeing a 200% jump in revenue in just a space of 10 months. His employee base had grown from 2 to 12 employees. And to cap it off, he had started to find business now across Africa. He actually changed his name from a Kenyan uh, from a Kenyan business name to an Africa-wide business name. And so he's actually doing business across the continent now. And the reason he was able to do that is because he freed himself as an individual to then be focused on growth and scale of the business. And he built systems with the help of Wild that allowed him to then find the right people, set up the right systems that allowed for the business to actually run on its own without him having to be there. So that's the kind of transformation we are talking about. Um, we have another gentleman who owns a company called Parapet Cleaners or Parapet Cleaning Company. And that's a company that, you know, is, is, is a traditional, when we met them, was a traditional cleaning company that got contracts with small offices and they would come and, you know, they would clean the carpets and clean the different offices, keep the place nice and tidy. When we met them, they didn't have a strategy and their idea of scale wasn't too clear at the time. We worked with them. They went through the program. We worked with them, helped them to build their strategy. And so they had, at the time after we worked with them, they then had, they developed clarity around how they wanted to grow their business. And as a result of everything that they learned and implementing those things in their business, they were able to grow. And as we speak right now, they have actually expanded into Uganda and they're looking to expand across the region of East Africa and they're looking at contracts now of cleaning up entire malls, not just offices where they started. They're actually taking contracts from entire malls. So those are the kinds of stories that we're looking at um, of companies that have been through the GBC program, really. You can't go wrong when you get those four pillars right. And we have proven it over and over and over again with uh, entrepreneurs that have been through um, through the program. That's very, very insightful. And uh At the end of the interview, I'll ask you to share with us some details of how people can get in touch with Wild and learn more about the Greatness Business Club. Absolutely. For now, we just want to learn more about, you know, yourself, NASA. Right. If you had a time machine and you could travel back and meet your very self at the age of 18, what book would you give yourself to read? And what movie would you recommend to watch that came out between your age of 18 and and right now movie a movie that came out between that period yeah and right now yeah wow okay um i think i think in terms of books have a much longer staying power (laughs) i think compared to movies so the titles that i'll give you for the books i think you know those have been around for a bit but for the movies it will be more recent okay so the book um the book that changed my life and one that essentially ushered me into the world of business and that I would recommend to any young person. I read it when I was a lot older. I was 23 years old. But at at 18, that book would have been Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That, I mean, you know, that book really shifted the way that I think about business. Um, It really shifted my understanding of what entrepreneurship should be all about. Um, You know, it's not just about slaving away working in your own business. It's about owning a business. And uh, and that is why as we do what we're doing right now, we try to build the capabilities of entrepreneurs to be able to become business owners as opposed to self-employees, business owners. Um, And so, yes, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, for sure. That is the book that I wish I had read a lot earlier. As I was 18, I did read it a bit later than that. As for the movie, let's see. I like sci-fi movies. I like sci-fi movies. I like, um, uh, you know, movies that sort of make the impossible seem possible. (laughs) And so some of the titles that I love, that I've loved over the years, include Real Steel, 
Oh, the robots fighting. Yes. Okay. I loved that. I loved Real Steel. Um, you know, just because it sort of shows you a side of what, you know, of, of the future that we are going to um, that is not yet real to us today. You know, artificial intelligence and, you know, how you, you know, the relationship with these machines and everything. I found it to be pretty interesting and the way that a machine can actually appeal to your emotions, the way that those robots did. It was pretty amazing how they pulled that off. Um, yeah, so, you know, that, that's, that's a movie that I've really liked. Um, others, really, you know, sci-fi, action, fast-paced movies like Fast and Furious. Uh, you know, I really loved that, uh, that franchise. Um, Transformers really loved that. Um, I am also a bit of a lover for superhero movies. So, oh, yeah, so movies like The Avengers and yeah. Thor and, and, and Superman. I'm really looking forward to Superman versus Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is me, you know. Um, those, and, and speaking of movies, actually, that's one thing I want to touch on. It's, it's something that uh, Marvel Universe did, the Marvel film production. What they did was unique because when they made the first movie which i believe was iron man they didn't make it as a standalone they planted a seed for it to intertwine with so many other movies and franchises to the point whereby i believe next year that will be probably their 12th or 13th movie and people are still flocking to the cinemas to watch them because of the strategy they had something which you are talking about at the very beginning of having a vision how do we get there and so on and so forth so that's remarkable what they've done no, none of that is happening by chance. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's about strategy, and I think they're smart. The reason why a lot of pe- the reason why Avengers was such a hit mm. is because it was pretty much a combination of mm. superhero movies that people had gotten to love. So, a Captain America, mm. Thor, Iron Man, all these coming together mm. in one movie. Who wouldn't want to watch that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so they they sort of they have found a way to tap into the emotions mm. of people. And I think it's very smart. And, you know, and that as a strategy, I don't think anybody else has done a better job than them. So, yeah, strategy, man. That's what it is. Mm. This is the first time I'm asking a guest this question. I've asked you what book you'd give yourself if you were 18 years old, what movie you'd recommend. We're recording this interview now, but you're going to listen to it probably two months from now. If you were to send a message to yourself in the future, the version that's listening to this right now, what message from the past would you send to yourself in the future? <laughs> that's an interesting one. Time warp stuff. Okay, so two months from now, what's probably going to be happening is that I'm going to be overwhelmed with work. We shall have launched GBC and I will be completely overwhelmed with work. And what I will need to know then is... What I'll need then is to feel how I feel now. Right. How do you feel right now? I feel, I feel extremely excited, passionate, and full of energy that I cannot wait to get started. That's how I feel right now. Now I need to be reminded of that then. Well, the good thing, this is recorded. So I think whenever you have a difficult time, you can always play this back and remind yourself how you felt prior to starting and maybe that can push you through those hard times absolutely yeah i believe so right. yeah this is the final question i've asked you some teasing questions and and and, <laughs> and all that but if the tables were turned and it were if this was your podcast so basically it's now your turn to ask me any question you can but it can only be one question what would that question be what would it take for you to quit doing what you're doing there's a number of things. I could be hit by a bus. I could fall <laughs> off a tall building. Um, basically, I would have to die because this is not something I'm about to quit or give up on. It is uh, purely driven by passion, 100%. And uh, it is something I see myself doing for a very, very long time. I am, in a way, documenting my story because I want to achieve a lot of things. And for people to listen to this podcast from 2015 when I started all the way to, I don't know when, when, when how far I'll, I'll live or whatever, but for someone to see the transition, how did this person get to where they're going? Who did they talk to? What people did he interview? How did that impact his life? Where was he then and where is he now? All documented. 
I feel that is something that can inspire someone who is similar to me right now that maybe needs encouragement and all that. So this is a story I want to tell for the rest of my life. So nothing would make me give up on this. Wow. That's I can't I can't think of a more perfect answer and and you know what else? That sounds to me like a message for you in the future as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I've got tons of messages for myself. <laughs> I am sure you do. I am sure you do. Right. So earlier you mentioned the Greatness Business Club and Wild. I'm sure there are a lot of people listening to this who are excited about joining this program. Could be in Kenya, it could be in Uganda. Obviously the Ugandan program has already started. Um, I'm not sure if you have details on when the next one will run. But for someone to get those details, where can they find you on, on social media, on the website and so on? How can people get in touch? Um, what people can do is basically go to the Wild International website, which is www.wildinternational.com. Wild being W-Y-L-D-E. Um, so that's our website. Um, you can go on there and get details about the classes, both here and in Kenya. You can also get in touch with me directly in as far as the Ugandan program is concerned. So you can write to me at Nasir, that's N-A-S-S-I-R, at wildinternational.com. Wild International as one word, wild being W-Y-L-D-E. Um, you can also get in touch with the Kenyan director who's in charge of the GBC program. Um, his name is Chris. And you can write to him directly at chris at wildinternational.com. So, How do you spell Chris? That's C-R-I or C-H-R-I? That is C-H-R-I-S at uh, wildinternational.com. So that is how you can reach both myself and Chris, and you should be able to have all your questions about GBC answered. Right. And I'll have all those emails and links put on your show notes page. The link will be businessmike.com forward slash wild. W-Y-L-D-E. So that's businessmike.com forward slash wild. You can get all these details of how to get in touch with NASA and Chris in Kenya. So thank you so much for your time. This has been a very pleasant interview. I wish you the very best with your upcoming program and I look forward to the businesses whose lives are going to change and impact the rest of us uh, in society. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dawid. It's been a pleasure. All right. Cheers. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for listening to Business Mike today. And if you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you and get to know what you think about the show. If you have any questions or suggestions, just drop me an email at daudi at businessmike.com. That's D-A-U-D-I at businessmike.com. Thanks again for listening. And until next Monday, take care.